But in the 80s, I commissioned the, uh, a doctoral student at the Canterbury University to do a study of how one could, what sort of lightning, how you could generate lightning to be used as an artwork. And this chap produced a, uh, a very good thesis and his primary suggestion was a thing called Jacob's Ladder, which is just two arcs, um, two columns with a very high voltage between them, and the, the, an arc forms at the bottom of, of these two electrodes, and it goes, it goes as, the, as the air heats up, it pushes the arc up the columns, and the top it bows like this and pops off, and then another arc starts. And they demonstrated that to me in their electrical laboratories. And I thought, oh yeah, okay, well that's interesting. But it didn't really, you know, do the thing. So it was quite a few years later um, when an American artist came down to New Zealand called Eric Orr. And Eric had worked with fire and water. And he did works where the water came down, the fire went up and... I said, thought, well, hell, you know, here's an artist that might, you know, if he can work with fire and water, maybe he can work with uh, lightning. So uh, we sat out here on the deck and I said, you know, what I wanted to do. And he thought, wow, yeah, that'd be a great idea. And so we sat around here and we thought we'd have tanks with lightning radiating out of them or cows that you know, would radiate lightning. And so we had all these fantasies. And, Anyway, uh, I said, come on, you know, I'm very serious about this, uh, Eric, you know, you know, when you go off and investigate and see what you can, can come up with. So Eric, who lived in both Los Angeles and San Francisco, which was the ideal place for this because it's full of all those mad Hollywood uh, special effects <laughs> outfits and companies, and he went researching this and he came across some Tesla coil people and LA and I went up and we had a look at this and, and then he came across this most ama amazing outfit called Survival Research based in San Francisco and this is the biggest pack of lunatics you've ever come across they're all sort of techo guys that love machinery and they you know they have heli they have jet engines that you can ride on and they have devices that'll blow your hat off at a hundred meters and one of the guys there Greg Lay I had this Tesla coil. It's about half as big as that one, but a very big, a very big Tesla coil by modern standards. Because most Tesla coils are really only those little things you get in a glass ball. And you know, some people have, might have a proper one this size, but there aren't really many big Tesla coils. I think the American government has one about half that size for testing lightning on aeroplanes. Anyway, I went across there and and had a look, and Eric had his Tesla coil stored in a warehouse. And it was absolutely amazing. He fired this up in the warehouse, and, the, and it had lightning coming off the top, and it was hitting the beams of this warehouse and going boom, boom, boom. And I thought, wow, that's really something. So, <laughs> so I said, all right, well, you know, if you can sort of triple the size and uh, <laughs> really make it go, that looks like a, that, that's what I call lightning. So, so he went away, and he's a mad keen enthusiast for it. If you look at his website, he's a great guy, great enthusiast, and he wants to make the two of the biggest Tesla coils, well, the two biggest Tesla coils in history, and have them sort of swapping lightning between them. He calls them the lightning research facility, and I was talking to him on the phone a couple of nights ago, and he said he thinks he's getting towards having the funding. He started a, he's got the place to buy the land, so you never know. That may happen. I hope it does, because... He's a great guy. But he was so excited about it that um, he started working with Eric and uh, they, they played around in San Francisco and it was quite clear that Greg could do the technical stuff. He, was, he works in a, a particle accelerator uh, machine in somewhere out of uh, San Francisco so he knows all about the technology needed to make little particles whiz around this place and he'd always been fascinated with Tesla coils so I was pretty happy that he could do it technically and he was so enthusiastic he was prepared to take two years off off his work to um, contract to build this. So we got underway and um, uh, 
they were very efficient. They, he got it done. Eric and I spent a lot of time trying to decide what shape it should take. And I think it's a beautiful form that Eric uh, came up with in the end. It's actually something we saw on the motorway driving around San Francisco. It was part of an, it was part of a, a, an advert, a big billboard advert. It had this, I think it was an eye in some word but it was just exactly that form with the negative detail around the top and the ball and so on. That's it! <laughs> so such is art created, you see. And uh, Eric Orr is a, was a, well, unfortunately was a great guy. He died um, about two years after this was finished. He's a great enthusiast. Um, he wanted to take Tesla off, you know, there's the famous photo of Tesla sitting in his laboratory with lightning whizzing all around him while he's reading. So the very first test we had for this work in San Francisco, there were hundreds of people there, they came from all over the states to see this thing. I'll, I'll show you the video later and you'll, you'll see. And uh, so Eric was determined that um, he would uh, out Tesla Tesla and so he was go he climbed up inside there at the t top, sat on a chair and pretended to read a book. <laughs> As, as, as I say, that ball there produce, it becomes a Faraday cage, and the Faraday cage, uh, because of the nature of electricity, which repels itself, always goes to the very outside of any sort of conductor or any ball. So in a case like that, if you sit inside it, there's no electric fields at all. And as long as you don't touch the, the, the outer part of the ball, or especially put your finger through, you're fine. If you stick your finger through, then the lightning will immediately come off your finger and you, it's about 6,000 degrees centigrade and, and uh, 3 million volts, I think it is. So it's not very good for you. <laughs>